And thank you everyone for coming. For any new uh, attendees, um, we are recording this session and that is mainly for um, those who cannot attend. So we'll have that posted in a week or two and you can share it with colleagues or on your social media uh, if you are wanting other organizers to know what's going on. Um, so I'm Caitlin Patience. I'm the Partnerships and Outreach Manager for Ontario Culture Days. Today, I'm joined by Kirstiana Bordage. She is our Programs and Operations Coordinator and Northern Ontario Lead. Will you give one more wave, Kai? We call her Kai. Um, she's gonna be managing the chat. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in there and she will let me know or do her best to answer them. Um, also joining us is our Marketing Manager, Kira Park. Kira, if you wanna give a little wave. Awesome. And then, as I mentioned, for those who are here, we also have Fernanda Sierra Suarez, the community engagement. Well, maybe your title has changed, but Fernanda from uh, National Culture Days, as well as Samuel Bournier Cormier from National Culture Days. Everybody. So, uh, they're usually willing to answer any questions that I can't do myself. Um, I just want to give a verbal acknowledgement of our funders, a sincere thanks to the Government of Canada, the Canada Council for the Arts, the province of Ontario, the Ontario Arts Council, the Toronto Arts Council. We also have supporters that include OLG, Star Metroland, Toronto Star, as well as new sponsors from 2022, including Now Playing Toronto, Via Rail, IV Charging Network, and Destination Northern Ontario. So those are all of the uh, organizations that make what we do possible. Um, Kira, if you want to uh, share your screen, we'll open up the slideshow. Awesome. Feel free to shout out if for some reason you can't see that on the screen. I'm just readjusting my screen. Give me a second here. I want to be able to see you, but there's so much, <laughs> so much I need to see. Um, okay, so next slide, please, Kira. So on the slide screen is a shorter general land acknowledgement, but I'm going to personalize my own today. I think that that's important. Ontario Culture Days is active throughout the province of Ontario, beyond borders and across multiple Indigenous territories. We acknowledge that Indigenous peoples are the original caretakers of the lands and waterways on which we work, create, gather and live. And although we are all located on different land today, I personally am speaking from the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat and Haudenosaunee people. It has been a very humbling and enlightening experience these um, past six months or so as my team and I have worked to create a reconciliation plan for our organization. I've also had the opportunity to engage with the Indigenous community as a representative of Ontario Culture Days including during the National Truth and Reconciliation Day weekend in Sault Ste. Marie during last year's festival. Ontario Culture Days is committed to a continuous process of education and dismantling of colonial approaches while celebrating the varied cultural artistic traditions of Indigenous communities. And we are committed to fostering meaningful relationships with these communities and supporting a diversity of Indigenous practices, art forms, and cultural expressions. We're very grateful to have the opportunity to work and create on this land. Slide. Um, so we have a large group here today. We're at 60 plus people and we'll probably get some more dropping in. Before we start chatting about this year's festival, um, I think it'd be best to tell you a bit more about the Ontario Culture Days organization. I would also love to get a feel for the amount of attendees as usual who might be potential new organizers. So while I'm telling you a little bit more about us, go ahead, if you're a new organizer, you're just meeting us for the first time, you're gonna be participating in the festival for the first time this year, go ahead and type in number one in the chat, just so we get a feel for that. Kai, could you also in the chat after those ones share our website link? just our general website homepage, thank you. So Ontario Culture Days is a not-for-profit organization and our mandate is to foster the public's engagement with Ontario's arts, culture and heritage as a way of enriching communities across Ontario. And this supports the vibrancy and sustainability of our sector. So in addition to the annual festival, we also provide other offerings, including articles which highlight arts and culture across the province, select artistic programming via our Creatives in Residence series, we also have a wonderful collection of on culture guide itineraries for regional travel on our website. And we also offer sector resources such as our annual speaker series in the spring. 
And all of that can be found at the link that Kai shares uh, in the chat on culturedays.ca. Bear with me, I am I feel like I've been sick for like six weeks, so <laughs> I might lose my voice a little bit, but I'll do my best. Um, now my favorite part, um, the Ontario Culture Days Festival. It is dear to my heart. I'm absolutely obsessed with this program. Um, the Ontario Culture Days Festival is an annual celebration of arts, culture, and heritage, which takes place each fall. And together we work with organizers of all disciplines to produce this province-wide festival. So these organizers present programs throughout Ontario, which invite the public to participate for free or close to free. And we work collaboratively with local, provincial and national affiliate Culture Days groups to make this unique event possible. Again, today we're pleased to have Sam and Fernanda with us from National Culture Days. Um, organizers, we're still on the same slide here. Thanks, Kira. So organizers can be, gosh, there are so many different things, but organizers can be an artist or performer, an arts organization, a small business, or they could be a gallery, a museum, a library, a DBIA, a municipality, and so much more. Um, there's really no uh, strict guideline there. As an organizer, you only need to host one event to be considered part of the Ontario Culture Day celebration, but you also have the option to create a hub of events and lead this as the main organizer or alongside each participating facilitator. So a lot of um, municipalities, galleries, um, arts councils host a hub of events. A hub is a collection of activities which take place in one location at one time so that visitors who attend can enjoy a group or a selection of events. You can register your hub online, but you'll need a minimum of three events to tether to it. Um, tethering, I don't know if that's a term that National uses, but we started to use it last year. It basically just means that if you are the hub, you're inviting events to connect to you so that we can see them in that virtual hub. Or if you are the event, you can ask to be a part of the hub. So I believe it goes both ways. Um, I wanted to answer this year how individual organizers can participate. I think we're seeing more and more people who um, are individual solo artists or um, they just have a small uh, arts business like a music studio, for example, and they don't exactly know how to participate. So there's a few different ways you can do it. You can just register your own event and run it as is during the um, Culture Days dates. Um, you can host and register programming that you would normally run during that period, for example, workshops, exhibitions, et cetera, or you can connect with other organizers or hubs in your area, like I just mentioned. So feel free to reach out to us and we can let you know who's registered events in your area in the past. Um, and of course, we also strongly encourage collaborative and new unique programming. So this 2023 dates this year will take place between September 22nd to October 15th, 2023. That three week um, format is uh, here to stay for the foreseeable future. Just a reminder that although it's three weeks, it's actually four weekends. Uh, this is our 14th year of programming in Ontario. Um, you can choose to focus on, you don't have to program for the duration of those festival dates. I wanna be clear about that. You can focus on one week, one weekend, you could focus on just weekends or just one day, whatever works for you, your organization or your community. Um, for a decade, the program took place over one weekend, um, but as it's gained momentum, the festival was elongated. And what we're hearing from organizers is that that just works better for them for the most part. Um, so we're going forward with it. In 2022, there were almost 1,000 events registered in 86 municipalities across the province of Ontario, and that included in-person and online. And our stats show us that more than 10% of Ontarians participated in Ontario Culture Days in 2022, which is obviously absolutely awesome. Uh, for programming, I will go through just the different types of programming. Um, there's many different types now. So you can do in-person events, and those can be indoors or outdoors. You can do online events, and those can be live, happening in real time, or they can be pre-recorded. Um, that, that live presentation could be like through Facebook Live with comments, or you could do it as a workshop on a platform like Zoom. You can also do self-guided activities, and again, those can be in-person or online. Um, the disciplines for the festival, it's a multidisciplinary festival, so it includes visual arts, dance, theater, music, history, heritage, architecture, design, culinary arts, craft, storytelling, body movement, so much. <laughs> and it's always nice when those um, disciplines also connect to a culture when possible. Um, I will reiterate, um, as we did last year, September 30th is the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. 
So in line with National Culture Days, uh, that day will be reserved to honor the lost children and survivors of residential schools and their families. Um, so September 30th will be set aside to create space exclusively for events that are organized to commemorate this day, um, including those aimed at sharing First Nations, Métis and Inuit perspectives. So what that means is that um, if you are hosting an event on September 30th, in order for it to be visible on the registration platform at culturedays.ca, it will need to um, be Indigenous programming or in conjunction with Indigenous organizations or artists. And if you have more questions about that, National Culture Days can speak well to that as well. You can also run events that run from, for example, September 29th to October 1st, so over the weekend. Um, if you have an exhibition, for example, or a studio tour, but it'll only be visible on the website on September 29th and October 1st. <clears throat> and I should mention that National Day for Truth and Reconciliation is on a Saturday this year. So I feel like it's gonna be a big year, <laughs> big events. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, okay, slide. Registration. So the Ontario Culture Days registration deadline is July 31st, 2023. That is the same as last year and I believe the year before. You can absolutely register events after July 31st, uh, but the earlier you register, the easier it is for Ontario Culture Days to promote the festival and your events. Um, registering before July 31st also lets you request event swag, which will be mailed to you before the festival and anyone is eligible to uh, fill out that form in August. Um, if you don't have the full event information yet, um, pick some of your key events to highlight so that don't don't aim to like register all your events in September, for example, pick a few of your key or cornerstone events, um, or just get like the bare bones information up there so we have a good idea of what's going on bare bones includes tombstone information um, and a picture and a short description. The registration portal will likely open in mid-May. Um, Sam or Fernanda, can you are you able to confirm that general timeline at all? Uh, yeah, we don't have a specific date yet, but it should be uh, like between the middle of the month and the end of the month in May. Okay, great. Um, slide six, Kira. So promotion and branding. Um, Kai, would you share the contact page link for our website uh, where people can sign up for the ONCD newsletter? So if you sign up here, we send out a bi-weekly e-newsletter, um, which highlights what's happening. So maybe you'll see yourself or your images or your program in there. Um, it also will notify you when you can begin registering events. And again, registering those events, you'll have a better chance of being shared and highlighted in advance of the festival. Um, <clears throat> for promotion, um, we also want you to be documenting your event. Um, so if you have great photos uh, from last year, um, definitely be using those and aim to take great photos and videos this year as well. And in both instances, if you have great images or videos from last year, you can send them to us through WeTransfer to info at onculturedays.ca. Kai, if you want to share the WeTransfer link, I know some people are unfamiliar with WeTransfer. We find it to be the absolute easiest file sharing service. You literally just pull your files from your desktop or upload them and drop them in, and it just sends with no cost, no sign up, no nothing. Um, so you can send us last year's or after this festival, you can send us this year's. Um, so festival hubs, this year we are continuing our festival hub program. Uh, this program highlights pro programming from within more than 16 communities across the province. Festival hubs can be found in various regions across the province, and we will work closely with these hubs to highlight their local festival programming leading up to and during this year's event. We encourage anyone who is interested in the program to follow along in 2023 and then let us know if you're interested in participating as a festival hub in 2024. We usually do the call out for festival hubs um, in the summer, even though the festival hasn't happened yet. Uh, for branding, Ontario Culture Day's logos and other assets uh, will be available to use in your event promotion. We aim to have other digital and printable assets available to you this spring as well on our website. And for those who are interested in hosting a hub or roping in other organizers, we'll also be providing a PDF for new facilitators that you can share with them. And that will really just answer the question of why you should participate in this amazing festival. Um, the Culture Day site has great resources as well, including lots of ideas on types of events in addition to marketing assets. 
And if you're unsure at any point about how to use branded materials, just email our team, okay? Uh, Kira, do you mind changing the slide? Here's some really important points. So inclusivity and compensation. We want you to consider diverse perspectives when programming your events. We encourage all organizers to invite participation. Verbally, don't just, you can literally say that you're looking for a variety of backgrounds, including perspectives from Indigenous, Black, and people of color, um, trans, non-binary, LGBTQ2S, as well as individuals from rural, remote, and Northern communities. In terms of compensation, Ontario Culture Days always encourages organizers to appropriately compensate the artists and creators that they hire. This is obviously because artist fees support fair participation in the sector by all creators and it allows the artists to continue doing what they like best. Um, you can find links to industry standard guidelines on these types of payments on our website. Carfac is a really good one. Um, so I called the festival free earlier and it absolutely is. It's a cornerstone of the event, but we also offer the option for organizers to provide a pay what you may entry, um, which basically means that um, people can uh, give a donation to enter the event. This supports low barriers to access. And um, while all registered events are still mandated to have free entry, you can list them as a pay what you may if you like. And that can be done for both in-person and online events. And again, on our website, you can find links on our organizer information page to the services that will allow you to accept pay what you may. Um, you saw I did a land acknowledgement at the beginning. We encourage all organizers to share a land acknowledgement when presenting events, whether in person or online. If you're unsure about wording, your local municipality or local school boards will often have um, correct information available for you. Slide, please. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that Ontario Culture Days has a variety of programming available throughout the year in addition to the festival. So I wanted to let you know that this spring we will be running a professional development speaker series, uh, similar to our symposium last year, but a bit more spread out. Um, so we are open to, if you have an idea, if you want to present, uh, if you want to be on a panel, get in touch with us. And we will be uh, in our e-newsletter uh, letting you know when registration is open so that you can join us for an in-person session in Toronto or for a virtual session following that. Uh, we also have the On Culture Guides. Kai, if you want to share a link to our On Culture Guides in the chat. Um, on culture guides are pretty amazing. If you haven't discovered them yet, they're basically two to three day itineraries for cultural tourists and families to explore the province of Ontario. And so we work with municipalities or destination marketing or tourism organizations um, to sort of highlight what's available, specifically focused on arts and culture in, in your region. So if you see that your region is missing, let us know. We will get in touch. Um, we also are returning our Creatives and Residence Series uh, 2024. Oh, sorry, 2023 this year. So we will have eight artists that will be presenting work during the, the festival. And a lot of them will be connected to the festival hubs that I described, but we are um, now working on Creatives and Residence for 2024. So if you wanna slide in a last minute submission, uh, email us directly and let me know because we'll be choosing those soon. Those are artists who uh, put together community engaged projects. And I also mentioned the regional festival hubs to you. Slide please. <clears throat> so as always, we encourage you to stay in touch. Um, Kai, if you wanna share links to our Instagram and our Facebook in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, if you want to reshare the sign up link for our e-newsletter, that's really the best way to keep in touch with what's going on. And we also have a Facebook organizer group. If you want to, I think you'll be able to share the link for that. The Facebook organizer group is for all of you, anyone who's planning a singular or multiple events during the festival. And we really wanna start seeing you use that space to just share inspiration and ideas of what you're planning, to ask questions. If you have a document that works well, for example, for how you keep track of um, anything to do with your event uh, or your facilitators, feel free to share that outline. It's really a space for you, but we include updates there as well. So if you join it, you can follow along. You can also book a meeting with myself and we can just chat one on one, no pressure, and you can talk out your ideas and ask any questions if you like. Slide. 
So thank you. Um, what I want to do now is um, have some of our festival hubs. Uh, here, if you want to hit the slide again, we have three um, people who are we're partnering with. So we're going to have someone from the St. Catharines Region uh, Festival Hub, the Alora Fergus Hub, and the Skugog Hub. Just tell us a little bit about um, their history and what they're planning for this year. And hopefully you'll find it inspiring and get you excited about this year's festival. So um, is it Ashley or Carly speaking from St. Catharines today? Feel free to unmute. Perfect. Hi. I'm losing my voice. This is great. Hi, Caitlin. This is Ashley uh, from the city of St. Catharines. And yeah, I'll be speaking today. Okay. Yeah, go for it. So just tell us uh, what you're planning. And sure. how, you, how you do it. I love your... <laughs> your setup as well if you want to tell us about that in St. Catharines. Absolutely. So uh, for starters, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Ashley Jed Rifkin. I'm a culture coordinator here in the city of St. Catharines. Uh, we have been, um, I think probably the what people mostly um, are interested about with our Culture Days program is that we uh, actually offer funding to artists, creatives, uh, organizations, businesses, to run culture days activities. So these are very small micro grants. Like they run in the range of, you know, about 300 to maximum about $1,000. And uh, we have an application process and people can apply for the small amounts of funding to run culture days activities. So um, that's kind of, <clears throat> we've been doing that for seven years now. And it's an extremely successful program. I uh, had to modify a little bit during COVID so that people could run online activities, but, um, uh, we find that this, it really uh, encourages participation, encourages diverse participation, and uh, it gets people excited um, about what we're doing. So that's one of the things that we do. And um, another thing that we've done more recently is partnering with our local library. So uh, we, you know, our, our, or artists and organizations that we partner with, that we provide funding to, uh, always need space. And so our library has really stepped up over the last couple of years. And they offer free space to all of our uh, activity organizers. And uh, they provide marketing expertise and they provide event uh, help on the day of. And it's been a really fantastic partnership for us. So, um, you know, I could go on and on, <laughs> but I won't. Uh, and um, if anyone's interested, uh, I'm happy to chat with anyone as well if anyone has questions about this or anything else Ashley. right now. Yeah. Will you just tell us about one or two of your events from last year, particularly the one that was nominated for a Spotlight Award? Oh, and I'll just quickly say that um, Spotlight Awards, Kai, if you want to share the link in the chat, Spotlight Awards are um, a recognition program uh, put on by Ontario Culture Days, and they basically highlight programs. Oh, I see Yanis nodding because she won an award <laughs> last year. Um, they're they're um, awards that uh, highlight uh, collaborative programming, accessible programming, um, best in person, for example. And so it's a great way to, to show your municipality the amazing things that you have to offer there. Um, so go ahead, Ashley. Sure. So the one, uh, the one that won, was, uh, yeah, I believe nominated was Carousel Players. Uh, they're a local um, theater for young audiences, uh, theater company. And they had this wonderful, um, uh, event that they have hosted differently in the past, but this year uh, it was kind of a drama walkthrough. So they occupy a portion of a downtown church called the Silver Spire United Church uh, in downtown St. Catharines. And um, so what they had done was set up different stations throughout their sort of um, arts and education center that they have at, that, at the church um, location. And so there were all these different activities and little mini plays and puppet shows and interactive um, experiences that families could walk through. So there was a puppet show, there was uh, this uh, dragon on the hill kind of interactive theater experience, they had a craft station, and um, it was a really wonderful opportunity for families, individuals to walk through this space and engage with all the different artists uh, who were participating in that uh, kind of a mini hub that they'd sort of organized on their own. So yeah, it was a really, really wonderful event. Awesome, very, yeah. very, very creative. Yeah. Um, okay, so Paula, if you wanna chat, Paula is from Center Wellington representing the Alora Fergus Festival Hub for 2023. Hi, Caitlin, how are you? Great, thank you. 
Good, thank you. That was an excellent presentation, very informative. So I appreciate that. Um, so a little bit of background on myself. I actually started working in this position with the township as a community development quarter, coordinator at the end of September. Um, so things just kind of fell in my lap um, kind of quickly as we went through the process. So in October, I was approached by the Allure Fergus Arts Council, who was looking for an opportunity to partner with the township for um, culture days. So I obviously jumped on that opportunity really quick. And we've had a couple meetings just brainstorming ideas and dream sessions and whatnot. Around the same time, my um, manager actually met Caitlin at the Tau conference. So um, that's kind of how we were connected with Ontario Culture Days. Um, and since then, uh, talking with the Allure First Arts Council, we have this great idea of make it big is the theme for what we're doing this year. Um, so with Make It Big, it's basically larger than life activities, whether it's, you know, a, a, we're looking at like large, like 40 piece wind bands, um, uh, yarn bombing bridges, um, large like chalk murals, um, a variety of different things like that. Um, so we decided that we would send an expression of interest to Caitlin um, and we've got our list of things together um, and we're now officially at the beginning of February have actually sent out a message uh, for people to submit their big idea to the township. So that's going to be open until the end of March. And at that time, we're going to kind of filter through meet mid-March, kind of filter through what's been presented to us and what kind of we need to go out and see if we can encourage um, people to participate. Um, similar to what Ashley had alluded to, uh, micro grants are definitely an option and they're um, suggested in the submission form. So anybody that um, submits uh, through the submission form will be notified of the micro grant opportunities and what's available for them to apply. I think one of the things that was great is that Allura Fergus is really rich in culture to begin with. So a lot of the events that are going to be running um, are actually already kind of happening in our community. So a great one's Monster Month. Um, so Monster Month has Tim Merton's Monsters, who have been in our community since 1996. So it's just a great paper mache, larger than life monsters that are scattered throughout the community um, for the month of October. And people can do a self-guided tour that way. We have great farmers markets here. Um, obviously, the Allure Fergus Arts Council already has studio tours and that kind of stuff. So looking at new great opportunities, as well as leveraging the ones that are already existing in our community has been a huge help. And then obviously I couldn't have done this without the Allura First Arts Council's help and uh, the assistance with Caitlin. So excited to learn and see the successes of this year. Well, uh, thank you so much. Um, I love your theme, make it big. I think that's so cool. For those who are wondering, there's no um, particular theme for Ontario Culture Days this year. Um, do your own thing. If you wanna come up with a little theme for your community, that's great. Uh, Paula, I also love the term dream sessions. That's amazing. I think it's so much better than like brainstorming. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I love to hear about the early programming and my kids love those monsters and Alora. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and then we will have Marion Myers uh, from the Scugog Festival Hub chat with us for a little bit. Is Marion here? I don't think I saw her. If she's not here, I'm gonna have to put someone else on the spot. <laughs> Do you see her, Kai? No? I unfortunately don't see her, no. Okay, what other hubs do we have here for 2023? I saw Tanya from Oakville. Do you wanna to chat, Tanya? Sure, hi everyone. Um, <laughs> I'm from the town of Oakville. And so here at the town, uh, similar to St. Catharines, we partner with our libraries because we have so many great branches here and they already do such great programming. Uh, we have a cultural center called Queen Elizabeth Park Community and Cultural Center. So a lot, we have dedicated studios and artwork on display. So this is another hub uh, here in Oakville. We also feature a special performance at the, a free performance at the Oakville um, Center for the Performing Arts. And it's usually focused on September 30th, Truth and Reconciliation. We also have a new space at our Oakville Museum. So we've opened up the coach house and we do programming out of there. As well, we have so, we are so rich in cultural uh, organizations here in Oakville. 
and they all come on board and do all sorts of things. I did notice that Bandology is here on the call, so that's really great to see them. They are part of um, the community in Oakville and they do a lot of programming. We also have outdoor programming. So we open up our, we have like three main squares uh, across the city where we offer or we permit free space for community groups and artists to do programming. As well at Queen Elizabeth Park Community and Cultural Center, we permit free space for any free activity that's happening for culture days. So local artists and um, culture groups can apply. So we have an application process, uh, apply for their space, we set them up, we assist as much as possible, but then the room is theirs to do whatever they want. And that's been very successful over the past 10 years. Um, and, and we will also assist any new group that doesn't know how the registration process, how to put their information on the Culture Day site. I will help with that. Uh, we usually send a photographer out to check everything out. Um, this year, we're really excited to be part of the hub, the regional hub of Halton, which includes uh, Milton, Burlington, uh, Halton Hills, and Oakville. Uh, and so what we're doing to get ready for this year's Culture Days is um, we have partnered with STEPS and we have a BIPOC artist in residence that will be announced soon, uh, who will be starting with us in March and working in our studios here and with our community. And we will launch their mural uh, during Culture Days. So we're really excited about that. Um, we also have a vinyl mural project that we're starting called Connections, and that will bring seven artists to create um, photograph, photo-based um, murals that we will install at all of our community centers. So we're really excited about that. We also um, will be featuring this year World of Threads. So that's a, a really amazing fiber festival that happens at Queen Elizabeth Park. And uh, they they were planning it already because um, they do it every two years and it happens to coincide with Culture Day. So we're really excited about that. So those are a few things that, that are happening here in Oakville. Tanya, thank you so much for that. That was perfect. <laughs> Thanks for hopping in there. Um, I'll ask, I also want to shout out um, Anita and Abby from our Vaughn Hub, Diksha from the Milton Halton Hub, Tammy from the Guelph Hub, Jonathan from the Toronto Queen Street West Hub, Elise and Kathy from the Sault Ste. Marie Hub, Pearl from the Halton Hills Halton Hub and Margo from the Ottawa Region Prescott Russell Hub. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, we have some questions in the chat. I just wanna quickly share with you the results from the little uh, survey that you took when you registered for the webinar today. Um, so we asked, have you already begun planning your 2023 Ontario Culture Days events? And no pressure, but the answers were 46% of you have already begun planning and 54% of you have not. Although if you're here, I would say that you have. That's awesome. Um, we asked if the majority of your Ontario Culture Days events would focus on in-person, virtual, or both. So 64% are going to focus on in-person. 33% will focus on both, and only 3% will focus on virtual online, which makes sense. Uh, we are definitely moving closer to in-person as we hopefully come out of COVID. <laughs> um, so that's great. I, I was really excited to participate in the festival last year and attend in-person events. It was truly special, and I'm glad to get back to it. Uh, the other question was, do you plan to create a focus day or weekend of events such as an event hub? So 32% of you said yes, which is great. That's awesome. We Absolutely want to see more hubs this year, even if it's just the minimum of three events. If you have any questions, let us know. 10% um, of you are unsure about that, so I encourage you to consider it. Um, so as I said, there's some questions in the chat here. I also was just reading a comment from Heinz Klein, uh, who said that a lot of this is same as what's happening in Kassel in Germany, um, which I just think is so interesting that you mentioned that because we were just talking, Heinz, I think he just stepped away, that's funny. We were just talking with one of our creatives and residents who was recently in Europe and said that in Europe, it's just super, super, like way more common than it is here um, to see artists just out and about and in the street and doing community engaged projects. Um, whereas here we need to sort of um, condition ourselves a little bit more to it. Um, so Kai, I know you had answered a few of them in the chat, but just for the group's sake, if you want to go back through a few of the questions and direct them to Kira if you think it's uh, relevant. 
Yeah, absolutely. I will direct one question. Uh, well, I'll answer one question that I answered. So there was a question about our brand assets and guidelines, if they are on the website and up to date. Um, so noted that the brand logos are up to date and they can be found uh, on the website. I've put the link in the chat answering that question. But we will also be adding updated guidelines for 2023 uh, with uh, marketing assets, and that should be in spring. We don't have a confirmed date on that. Yeah, are you comfortable talking to um, some of the things we're hoping to provide this year? For sure. Um, yeah, so one thing that we'd really like to provide is some signage for templates for people to use and some social media templates. Um, we're very interested in knowing what sort of marketing assets you would be you would find useful. So I'm I'd definitely like to hear about that in the chat. Um, we will provide brand guidelines as well. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the goal will be um, that some of the signage you can print off yourself or you can send it to a printer and have it printed. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So we'll give you a few options there as well as, as Kira mentioned, things for graphics for social media, et cetera, things that you can put in your e-newsletters and share with people online. Kai, what's next? Um, there's a couple of questions regarding uh, a little bit more, I guess, clarity on how to approach uh, finding locations, like how do you, people see yeah. um, where um, to yeah. choose locations for both indoor and outdoor? Okay, yeah, um, that definitely can be a bit tricky, a little bit overwhelming. Um, so for outdoor spaces, um, obviously the first thing that comes to mind um, if you don't have outdoor space if, if you, at your own location um, is parks. And so you have an option there. Generally parks in most municipalities are run by the municipalities and they can provide a permit for the space. Um, permits are not that expensive usually for parks. You just have to provide all of the relevant information. And sometimes it can just be more of a heads up. Like I'm planning to do this thing in the park. I'm expecting about 20 people. I'm not gonna do any loud music. And they just appreciate the heads up and they might not even charge you for a permit. It kind of depends on whether you're going to have music, food, et cetera. So definitely be looking at parks. Um, I am not opposed to sort of taking over safely uh, things like sidewalks and driveways and places like that, um, as long as you're not disturbing anyone's safety, fire escapes or places of business. Um, and then Libraries are a great resource for both indoor and outdoor. I think a lot of people forget that libraries have outdoor space, even though it's sometimes small. So you might want to get in touch with them about using their spaces. Um, municipalities also offer a number of spaces and they might be indoor spaces and they might be different than you're expecting. I think a lot of people think of municipal spaces as sort of um, set indoor banquet style rooms, but a lot of municipalities have unique spaces on offer, spaces that you might even not have expected were connected to the city. Um, other places include uh, legions, churches, uh, etc. Is there anyone who wants to jump in and just share any quick ideas uh, for indoor outdoor spaces that I might not have mentioned? Feel free to just come off mute and shout it out. Okay, cool, put it in the chat if it comes to mind. I hope that was a little bit helpful. Don't be afraid to ask people, whether it's a place of business or a city or a rotary club, um, the worst they can say is no, or the worst that can happen is that they tell you a price and it's out of your budget or you don't have a budget. So feel free to just ask. Kai? I'm just looking here. If people want to get uh, in touch to be included in hubs, so mm -hmm. yeah. So if you, we already have the list of festival hubs for this year on our website. So if you go to our website um, and you click the festival drop down, you'll see the, the hubs there for 2023. So if you see your hub on that list, um, you can get in touch with us to clarify who our partner is in that area and we can connect you with them because that partner, generally speaking, is taking on the facilitation of a somewhat large hub, whether it be indoor, outdoor, uh, et cetera. So we can connect you with them. Um, otherwise, um, 
there, there's other hubs that aren't our official festival hubs and there will be lots of those as well. So as I mentioned in the presentation, if you wanna email us, we can check our list of who registered last year. And what we'll do is we'll tell you the organizations that registered, whether it was a library or an arts council, et cetera. And then we can connect you with them or let you know who that was. And you can reach out to them and say, are you planning to participate this year? Are you, are you planning to do a hub? Do you have any space to offer? Can we connect and put something together? Because I know it does make more sense if an event uh, doesn't always stand alone, if it stands together with other events. Okay. I believe that's everything that was asked. Is there any other questions anyone has they want to throw in the chat or ask? Uh, the recording uh, we mentioned at the beginning uh, will be available within one to two weeks and that'll just be on YouTube. So it'll be easily accessible. I'm just quickly looking through here. Heinz, we were talking about you while you were gone there. Did you catch that, Heinz Klein? <laughs> one minute. Um, yeah, um, a little bit. Um, this reminds me actually really very specifically on the uh, documenta in Castle, mm -hmm. which is uh, one of the biggest international uh, cultural festivals. And there are some ideas they have, which might be really good to integrate in uh, Ontario Culture Days. Yeah, totally. Let's steal inspiration from other festivals. I'm all for it. Heinz, if you are able to share the um, the link in the chat to that festival, that would be awesome. You had also mentioned that a community kitchen component would be a good idea. And I just want to mention that because I know that culinary activities can sometimes be a little bit scary in terms of feeding food to the public or making food with other people. There can be safety and health registration. Yeah, yeah ask there them. Are, Go for it. There are some are some possibilities like uh, part of uh, the Documenta 15 was actually that uh, different groups from different countries were going and creating actually food and then uh, gave it out to anybody who came by. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the whole kind of uh, how they did that. They did a lot of other stuff, very interesting stuff. Uh, I can uh, possibly forward uh, some of the information. It's like they had a program they had, I don't know that the whole thing was a hundred days and every day was something going on. Amazing, a <laughs> hundred days, holy cow. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> very interesting. A few more things in the chat here. Um, Tanya from the town of Oakville, uh, Kira is saying that a flag would be good. <laughs> I don't think flags are in our budget, but a design for a flag is probably something we could look at doing um, and you could get that printed. Great and, idea. Yeah, we've had that in the past. That is a super fun idea. Um, somebody, Abby from the city of Vaughan said that malls can work for some events if they're willing to collaborate. Um, I know that our mall, for example, I'm in Milton, they do so many things in the center of the mall. So that's actually a great idea. You can do that in an empty storefront or in the center of the mall, a workshop or a performance. I've definitely seen that many times before. Um, yeah, okay. I think that that, oh, uh, Caroline. Yeah, I have one more uh, yeah. question uh, about festival hubs. And I think I can speak on this a little bit from last year um, was for regional festival hubs, do you recommend trying to have event hubs? Um, on the culturedays.ca website. Um, so I was just going to note that we actually did this last year, um, but so we definitely encourage it. Um, last year, I believe we set up most of the uh, event hubs and tethered them to the actual festival hub page um, so that we could present those. But yeah, definitely uh, the event hubs are a great tool to use. Uh, to keep your events together in that region and to promote. Yeah. yeah, so for those who aren't clear on it, 
the, the virtual hub tool is really cool because it kind of creates like a mini web page for you. So instead of trying to send people separate links to events, you can just send them this one link to your virtual hub. And when you, it'll have like a headline and a great picture and a description. But then when you scroll down, you can see all of the tethered events there. So people can go to it and see, I think like uh, Pearl from Halton Hills, they do um, a couple of different types of virtual hubs for their area. So you can go and see just what's happening at the cultural center in Halton Hills, for example, as opposed to everything happening in Halton Hills. So you can narrow it down a bit. Kai, I did see one more before we go here. Um, Carolina from the city of Vaughan says for press releases and announcements, do we do that as a group um, of regional hubs or individually? So for the festival hubs, um, we absolutely encourage you to do your own press release, but we will be doing them as well. And all of that will bring a lot of attention to the hubs. It's the same for anyone else. If you have an organization, um, we encourage you to get in touch with local newspapers and magazines in your area to let them know what you're doing. Um, yeah, so I think that's good. Um, thank you everyone for coming today. Thank you, Hannah, for saying this was a helpful presentation and conversation. That's wonderful. It was. <laughs> good. Um, so feel free to reach out if you have any questions. And if you want to hang back, I will sit here for a little bit. We can chat in a smaller group if you like. I know some people have to leave. So thanks again.